Okay, so uh, we spent a little bit of time uh, customizing this prompt. Uh, this prompt is actually very cool because we can do more than one thing with it. Uh, remember, we've got the options of... Um, we've got two buttons, basically, and we can have up to a third. Uh, I've got OK and I've got Cancel. Now, I'm noticing something here, and I'm going to confirm it when this, when this comes up. Um, on my real device, it shows OK on the left and Cancel on the right. And it looks like it's the same on my, on my virtual device. Let me just confirm it. Because that's one of these quirks. Just like the documentation said, there's, there's an Android quirk, depending on the version of Android. So I do see OK on the left, Cancel on the right. And the way that's working then is it's backwards. Cancel first, OK second. Now what I want to do is, if we go back to the documentation, um, it tells us that each of the buttons that we add in this little group here is assigned a number, a whole number. One, two, three, ten. But Android only pays attention to the first three. So technically we could have another button here. OK, cancel, or, you know, never mind. We can have up to three buttons. So don't do this, but if we wanted a third button, we would do comma, single quotes, hello. Right? Should make sense. If we wanted three buttons, we do it that way. I'm not going to add a third button. We'll keep two buttons. What I, what I do want to do with this is we've got two possible options. We've got OK, we've got Cancel. If we do OK, I want it to show the person's name on screen. If they click Cancel, it's like, never mind, don't show anything on screen. So we haven't really dealt with that. We've only assumed the person typed the name. We haven't, assumed, we haven't done anything with Cancel, actually. We've done something with the result of OK, but not with Cancel. So let's work with that. Um, that needs to, a decision needs to be made. This will make, this will be something we do even more next month when we talk about a database. We need to make decisions with the data from the database. Here we'll get a, another taste of it, which we did a little bit of, uh, very briefly, very quickly, unfortunately, last month when we were doing the load name. Remember that? Um, we've got if, we've got else. This is one way to make a decision. So line 68 to 72, this is one way to make a decision. We've got an if, and then we've got an else. On the if, we check if something is true. We're always checking for truthiness. We're always checking if something is true. If it's true, do everything inside of this first curly brace block. Or else, it was a false. So do everything inside of the else block of curly braces. So what I've got here is local storage dot username equals equals undefined. When when we first launched the app, there was no username. There was no username in local storage. It was undefined. So we're checking. Is there nothing in that username variable? Yes, there's nothing the first time you run the app. So don't do anything. Don't put any name there. Um, the next time, some, it asks for the name. It gets saved, which is line 63. So the next time you launch your app, this happens again. It's going to load name. It's going to check. Is the username undefined? No. Now the username has John inside of it. So it, skipped this, it skips this part. John does not equal undefined. So it skips this and it goes to else. And under else is then, okay, show the name. That's one way to make decisions. Is this happening? Yes, do that. It didn't happen, do that. I want to do something very similar up here of prompt because we've got an OK and we've got a cancel. I want to do something with someone clicking OK and I want to do something with someone clicking cancel. So if else will apply here as well. So let's add a brand new line 63 and we will create a skeleton of if. So we'll type if, open close parentheses, open curly brace, close curly brace, else, <coughs> open curly, close curly. So add that to your prompt function.
So according to the documentation, each button has a value, one, two, or three. Here I have two, cancel and OK, which means one or two. And so we're going to check. If a person clicked OK, display the name. Or else they didn't click OK, they, they clicked cancel. Those are the two options. So the other option then will be don't display a name because they chose not to display a name. So we'll, we'll fill in the if part in just a moment. The result is either display the name, don't display a name. So what we'll need actually is um, to move some of our code here. Um, let's move this these two lines. Let's move the local storage username. Let's select that and the display it. Let's cut that. Let's move it into the if part. Remember in Notepad you can actually select and drag and drop. Select that. Just drag it. So now this is not going to save the name and display it unless the person clicks OK. We haven't quite defined that yet. That's what's going to go in the parentheses. But the logic of it is if they click yes, save the name, display the name. Or else they click cancel. That's the else part. Um, so let's copy line 65 and add it into else. And then let's change the part inside of the HTML just to be quote, end quote, meaning don't display anything. If else, either this will happen or that will happen. Okay, what will happen? This is what we define in the if parentheses. Um, according to the documentation, we can access, let me refer to it again, we can access each button based on its index number back up here, button index. The index of the pressed button. Note the index uses one based, so the value is one, two, three. Okay, so um, that means button index. Okay, so that means here we will write results dot button index. like my documentation. I'm getting a result from the prompt, either a button index or the name, which is they didn't put one. And so I'm about to check, did they click the OK button? My OK button is my second item. So we will say space equals equals. We've seen equals a single equals before, and that's assigning. We're taking the thing on the right, we're putting it into the thing on the left when it's one equals. When we've got double equals, we're comparing. Is the thing on the left the same as the thing on the right? And what I'm looking for is a two. Because cancel is number one and OK is number two. If we had a third button, it would be number three. So we're checking. Did the person click on number two? They clicked OK. If they clicked OK, then do everything as normal. Display, Save the name, display the name. Or else they didn't click on number two. They clicked on one or three or whatever. So there's the else. No, they didn't click on two. They clicked on something else. So don't display anything on screen. That's the logic of it at least. The code, the syntax of it, this is it here. The logic of it, we'll see if it works when we run it because that's the two, in my opinion, the two types of errors that can happen in any programming language, a syntax error or a logic error. Syntax is did you write the code correctly? 
But a logic error is, does it work like it's supposed to? Even if you write perfect code, that doesn't mean it's going to work how you intend it, unfortunately. And so logic errors are oftentimes much harder to fix than syntax errors. But let's see what it let's see if it works. I'm going to save my code here. I'm going to run it on my devices. And then I'm going to test it and see what happens. I might have to to change this to a 1. I might have to have an extra an extra check, one or two, or two or one, that's, we'll see, that's the logic of it, but let's see if the syntax, if the code was written properly. So as this loads up, this if is known as a conditional statement. A condition must occur. We're checking for conditions. If is not the only kind of conditional statement. There's others, but this is a pretty common one. So I'm going to load... Uh, I'm going to go to the about, as always. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go to about, customize... I'm going to put in a brand new name. Click OK. Close that out. It does say the new name. Welcome Yuki. So it's got the new name. I'm going to uh, go back to it. Customize. I'm going to start typing something, but then cancel it. Cancel. I'm going to go back. Welcome. Nothing. Let me see if it shows up here on my emulator to show you the result. Okay, let me check it on my emulator. Currently says Welcome Jane. It remembered my last name. Uh, but I'm going to go back to About. Click Customize. I'm going to add a brand new name. Click OK. Close that. Welcome Akira. So it saw that I had pressed button index 2. I had clicked the OK button. So it stored the name, showed the name. I'm going to go back to About, Customize. I can write something or not, but I'll just cancel. Close that. Welcome. Nothing. That's exactly what we're saying. Don't display any name. There's no name to display because I've canceled it. Did that work for you? Anyone need a little help? I don't quite get the relationship between that cancel OK and the, and the two bumps that come up, one and two. Mm -hmm. It seems like that OK would be number two there in our code. Yet it's displayed on the left and it seems like it would be number one in the, yeah. in the running code. How does it know? Well, that's when in the documentation we see the quirks here. In Android 3 and later, buttons are displayed in reverse order for devices that use the hollow theme. So there's a quirk on these particular devices that I'm testing it on. So they all use the hollow theme? Is there a way to define the theme? Android 3 or does it just default to that? It defaults to that on the device level, and then if a person goes into their settings and such, they can change it. Which then that's problematic because what if they change to another theme? Now the buttons are back in the right order. One and two. So that's the quirk there. They don't really say what to do about that. They just say there's a quirk here, be aware of it. So that would probably be more more code and more testing, more if-else checking. Is it really the OK button? 
or is it or is it not? And it, it might not have a way to test that because it just seems to simply be number one, number two, that's it. It doesn't really store the word OK or the word cancel within the index, which I would like that. Yeah. So yeah, this is kind Very of a good. big quirk. Seems like that would have to be forever once it hits on so that's why I'm saying don't update your code, don't update your, your project template and such during the development phase because maybe they decided to put it back and then now all of your OKs are cancelled. Okay, so um, at this point uh, we've kind of got it going how I want. Um, there still could be some beta testing that we could do for other possibilities uh, because here, for example, we're assuming the person is going to type a name. And what does a normal human-like name look like? Letters. So, however, what if the uh, entity enrolling here is IG88? Click OK and then it'll say welcome IG88. Um, so what if a person types in other characters? What if they go uh, like this? What if they're having a bad day? It'll accept it. It's letting you type in anything you want there. And it'll say welcome, you so-and-so. So we don't have any extra checks here about valid input and that is a big endeavor because we we have to probably use regular expressions and other advanced stuff to check what did the person type does it fall within the boundaries you all the time experience logging into websites or creating passwords on a website that says make sure it's eight characters long and uses letters and numbers and symbols and then some places say make sure it's nine characters long and no special characters. So that has to be then programmed for proper input because as soon as you put in an exclamation point in a, in a, in a website that says don't use special characters, it has to then warn you don't use that character. We have none of that checking at all going on and that's kind of a big answer to really fix, a big issue to fix. So I'm not really going to do it right now but be aware a person can type anything here. Uh, which may or may not make sense, but to really make it work properly, we would have to write much more code, probably dozens of lines of code, to kind of test for the eventual possibilities of wrong input. Because um, the, you can really never make anything foolproof. There's just so many ingenious fools out there. So we will um, change gears a little bit. Um, where I want to now customize the look of my project. We've been using this plain old gray design for a while. Let's start to customize the colors now. So any final questions on anything we've talked about today before we change gears to that? Can we put that line 6 or 7 down there where 73 doesn't accomplish the same thing? Would that, or would the fact that Jane was in there keep it from being undefined? Exactly. Jane has been saved at some point, and so then, undefi then undefined would not happen. Mm -hmm. The reason that undefined could happen is really only when you load the app for the very first time. There's no local storage object. So that's to take care of that there's no local storage object, don't display anything. A name has never been saved. So we said instead of undefined, we said Jane there. I'm not sure. Uh, does it pass the name Jane automatically? I haven't paid attention. Customize. I won't type anything. Click OK. Okay, so it does pass the name Jane, which is here, default text. Uh, so we can have more if statements and also if else, which we'll talk about later, but we can check, well, what if the name is Jane? Yeah, it, it, instead of the word undefined there, we had quote Jane, quote. But what if the person's name really is Jane? Yeah, it, it, I, mean, I was just thinking about it. 
So we could make it a very, very obvious weird name, Balthazar or something. You're not going to run into many Balthazars, perhaps. So we can put some weird name there that we know they will change. Um, but yeah, you're, you're thinking ahead for user input. Exactly. If you don't want any placeholder, you're saying? Exactly. Don't put anything in these quotes. Uh, just leave it empty like that, and there will be nothing in the default text. 